Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about creating your first WPF application. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just click New Project inside Visual Studio 2010, and I'll select WPF Application. We can give this a name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at WPF Application 2, and we'll pick a folder for it to save it in. Once you click OK, what's going to get created is your WPF uh, project template. If we go over to our Solution Explorer here, you can see that we've got an app.xaml and a main window.xaml that's been created. And what's shown to us in the designer here is a split screen. On the bottom we have XAML, which if you're familiar with HTML or XML, the syntax will look similar with these angle brackets, and opening and closing tags. And on the top is our visual design surface. Now we can interact with the visual design surface the same way you would in, say, Windows Forms by going over to your toolbox and you can select any of the common controls you may want to put on your form. Like for instance, we can put a text box on here, so I'll just left click on the text box and drag it somewhere onto the design surface and let go. And when I drop it, you'll notice down below that the designer has created XAML for us and it set some properties and some alignment based on where we put that text box. And as I move this text box around, you'll see that these properties update. You can see the margin is changing as I move these, as I move this text box around. Now we could also modify these properties instead of with the designer via the properties panel. So if we go ahead and bring out the properties panel here, you'll see that we're looking at our text box, text box one, and here's the list of all the properties we can change. So if we wanted to change the height, the easiest way here is to click in the search box and just type in height, and you'll see it says 23, which is the same thing that's shown here in in our XAML view. We can go ahead and change the property here to say 40 and press enter. And now you'd see the XAML is updated and the design surface is updated. We can also edit these properties directly in XAML so we can just go into the designer at the bottom here and change it to say 25 and you can see that the design surface updates. I often find it's easier to work directly in XAML than to say work with the properties panel or with the visual designer. So often what I'll do is I'll, I'll collapse the properties panel and, and, and I'll often even collapse the visual designer. But for this demo, we'll leave it open so you can see what's happening. And then I can come in here and I can modify these properties. So let's say that I wanted to change the vertical alignment from top to center. And you'll notice that I have full IntelliSense here uh, and full auto completion, tab completion like you'd expect. So if you want to change some property here, if you press control space that brings up the IntelliSense like like normal Visual Studio and you can just look at all the properties so let's say we wanted to set the background and I can just press tab here and I get auto completion you can come down here and let's let's say set it to Azure and now you can see that the the text box up here is now got a new background property and we've set that directly in XAML now we can also create elements directly in XAML without having to use the toolbox you can just start typing an open tag and you'll get auto completion and we'll say type button and press tab and now you can see that I've got the auto completion for the button here so I can say content equals say click me and then I'll just close the tab in line um, and let's give it a height and a width so it doesn't span the entire screen and you can see the designer is changing as I'm editing these properties up above Now one other thing you may want to do now that we've got a button on our form is we may want to put say a click handler on it and that's going to involve writing some C-sharp code. So what we can do just like in Windows Forms on the designer you can double click on the button and that will create a button click handler for you in code behind. And if we take a look at our solution explorer to see where we're at we've got a main window XAML and if you expand it you'll see there's a main window .xaml .cs. That's the code behind file for this window that we're working in. So here's main window and you can see it's a partial class that's because we have a XAML piece is the front end and this C sharp piece is the back end those are the two partial classes that make up your window and now if we flip back to our XAML page here you'll see that since we double clicked on the button the designer generated an attribute uh, in our XAML tag called click and set it equal to the button click handler now we can also we'll go ahead and delete this and go back to our XAML and we can also create this in XAML directly instead of double clicking on the editor I can type click and you'll notice the IntelliSense shows me that that's an event and if I press tab to complete now you'll see IntelliSense is telling me that it will create a new event handler for me so you can go ahead and just press tab there 
and it will do the same thing. It'll generate an event called button click. And now if we right click in XAML and say view code, that will take us to our code behind. You can see that that handler has been created for us. There's one final way that these things can be, that event handlers can be created. So let's go ahead and delete this again. We'll flip back to XAML. I'm going to delete the attribute, the click attribute setting since we've deleted the code behind for it. Just like we were able to modify properties using the properties panel. I'm going to clear my search filter from earlier here. Just like you're able to modify the properties, you notice that there's a tab here also for events. So we can click on the events tab and we can see all of the events for this button. For instance, the click event, right? And you can see that there's no, no handlers available for it because we haven't uh, we, we deleted the handler before in the back end. So if you want to create a handler, we'll go ahead and click inside the text box here and press enter. And that will add a button click handler for you. And in this case, we had a previous one sitting there. So now, same thing, the click event is now wired up to button click and we've done that through the properties panel. So those are three ways that, that you can modify properties or set events on an object. You can do it directly in the design surface you can do it from the XAML view here, or you can do it from the properties pane. None of this requires writing C sharp code, of course. Uh, the only maybe code you'd be writing would be XAML. So again, if you want to create new elements in XAML, it's an opening tag. And let's say create a shape here. And you can see I'm setting all of these properties directly in XAML and getting full IntelliSense as I type. And so let's let's set that here and let's set We'll set vertical alignment to center and horizontal. You can see I'm getting full IntelliSense as I type here. And I'll go ahead and just close the tag. And now an ellipse has shown up. And now I can actually drag it around in the designer. You see I've got some nice snapping and layout here. And as I do that, my XAML gets updated. So I just drag this ellipse around. And now the designer added margin settings for me to position it inside my form. All right, that's it for, the, for creating your first XAML application.